the Purdue Boilermakers and a monster 2021 season last year for Jeff Brom and that bunch. Uh, we'll start off with this. Post-game win expectancy, a little scary. 6.02 and 5.98 uh, for a team that went 8-4 and four in the regular season. That is a cause for concern. Uh, as far as returning production goes, number 61 in the country, 63% coming back. It, offense and defense, both uh, relatively strong. Offense obviously stronger than the defense this year. But, you know, I, this, I mean, the numbers were awesome last year. I just, uh, it, it, this was really good, a good rebound year for Jeff Brom and that bunch. Let's uh, let's look at projected SP Plus record, 7-5. and five. It's what Bill Conley's got them going. Uh, as far as roster strength, like I said, the guys over at CFB Winning Edge have got them at number 66 in the country. Um, you lose David Bell, you lose George Karloftis, you lose Xander Horvat, you lose Milton Wright. Um, I mean, it's just, you know, some some big-name guys, and yet there are quite a few guys actually coming back. So there are studs at certain positions, and it looked like they got that energy back towards the end of last season. I'll, I'll certainly say that on offense. We'll start off with that. Brian Brahms unit. The offense averaged 33 points per game when David Bell got 70-plus receiving yards and 22 points per game when he did not. So he was the linchpin for the offense. Uh, now, obviously, you watched them in the bowl game against Tennessee, and you had Brock Thompson catching for 200-plus yards, whatever. Uh, you had the uh, tight end, Durham, actually catch, uh, catching, what, a couple of touchdown passes. It looked like O'Connell was going to be fine. Uh, the offensive BPA per drive last year was number 49. They were number 18 in passing success rate, number 67 in rushing success rate. Uh, not as explosive as you would imagine them being, number 120 in explosive play rate, but a lot of that might have been how how many plays they actually ran. Uh, remember, that's just play rate, nothing nothing more than that. Um, let's, uh, let's look at Aiden O'Connell. He, he lost the wide receivers, Bell and Wright. Uh, Wright, of course, academics... Uh, another casualty there. Tight end Durham, wide receiver Thompson return. Brom can develop skill players. We already know that. I would expect a lot of these guys that he's got in there to be pretty successful this year. Uh, the offensive line does have experience. They got three starters back, another with 450-plus snaps. You got two good transfers coming in. Can they get anything out of the run game? Now, I understand that that's not exactly what Brom specializes in, but they were number 128 in rushing PPA per play you got to do at least a little bit better than that uh, so that you can, you know, maybe get other teams off your trail, get them away from the quarterback a little bit. Just try and confuse them some. Uh, be a little unpredictable. I I'll say that. Moving over to defense, they lost the defense coordinator, Brad Lambert. That's going to hurt. He headed over to Wake Forest. So the co-DCs this year are Ron English and Mark Hagan. Uh, what is this defense without George Karloftis? I mean, the defensive end last year, you can talk to coaches. I mean, they will tell you other teams schemed and shifted and did all kind of things on their line to specifically stop him. And yet that defense was still really, really good. If you don't have a guy like that, what can this defense be? I'm really curious. They were number 62 in Havoc rate, number 41 in PBA per drive, number 69 in scoring opportunities, but also number 35 in points per scoring opportunity. A scoring opportunity, by the way, is a drive inside the opponent's 40-yard line. So, you know, the fact that Purdue allowed that many drives inside their 40-yard line and were able to still get stops, that's pretty awesome. Defensive line does have four guys that return with 350-plus snaps. The linebackers, Graham and Douglas, should be pretty good. The secondary, well... Okay, you've got the cornerback, Brown. you got the safety, Allen. you got Indiana transfer cornerback, uh, Taylor, coming in. Like, we'll see what happens here. We'll see what happens with this defense. They are projected favorites in five ball games out of 12. No, that's not good. Uh, however, their win total is 7.5. It's juiced to the under at minus 125. But uh, this team is plus 550 to win the division. And, and maybe... Maybe they're doing something that, let me look for the right word here. Maybe they're doing something so completely different from the rest of the division that it catches everybody off guard. Now, I mean, obviously, brahm has been in this division for a while, so everybody knows kind of what to expect. But if they are so much better at throwing the football than everybody else and they can outscore teams, then maybe we got something here. As far as keys to the season, uh, this is another team just like the other ones. 
plus seven turnover margin in wins, minus nine in their losses. Uh, they were number 78 in turnover margin last year. That's not going to allow you to compete for the division. It just won't. Uh, this team's postgame win expectancy last year certainly caused for concern. I mentioned that earlier. They were eight and four in the regular season. Postgame win expectancy, as far as what the stats say they should have been, was closer to six and six. Now, was that luck that allowed them to win two extra games, or was it coaching? If it's coaching, maybe you can expect uh, to replicate the results. If it's just luck, mm, we'll see. Defense was number 45 in rushing success rate allowed, number 45 in defensive line yards. Uh, can you keep it up? Like Because if you can't stop the run in this division, you are probably toast. Uh, that offensive energy, as I mentioned early on, uh, it appeared to be back last year, especially towards the end of the season. How much of their success last year was offense versus having a pretty good defense? Like, if you've got a great offense and a pretty good defense, you can win a lot of ball games. If you've got a great offense and a crap defense, you're probably going to lose a lot of ball games. I want to see what they look like this year heading into the next season uh, or heading into, you know, the middle of the year, the conference season. I I really like the team. I've got them going 7-5. and five. That first game against Penn State, massive swing game. I mean, just a massive swing game. Uh, I expect them to go on the road and beat Syracuse. I think they're going to beat Florida Atlantic at home. Um, I mean, the road schedule is not all that daunting. You've got a lot of good games at home this year. Your road schedule at Minnesota, at Maryland, at Wisconsin, at Illinois, at Indiana. You should reasonably expect to be able to win one, two, uh, three. I mean, at least three of those road games. Uh, and then you got your other ones at home. you got Iowa at home. you got Northwestern at home. you got Nebraska at home. I, I think you got a, a good chance of being pretty good this year, but I want to see what the defense looks like. I, I just, I've just i got to see what it looks like without Lambert and without Karloftis. So uh, so I've got them at 7-5 and five this year. Uh, it's going under the win total, but would it surprise me to see them go 8-4, and 9-3, and three, you know, show up in Indianapolis? No, not in the slightest. Like Jeff Brown, all of these teams are pretty well coached. All of them have a very strong identity. I I like Purdue. I think they're going to be all right. So 7-5 and five for me on Purdue. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.